Our scripture lesson today comes to us from the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 24. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard no doubt of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism far beyond many among my people of my same age, for I was far more zealous for tra tra the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once to Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stay with him 15 days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. And what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it, said, the one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again, David. It's not every day of the week you get to hear a marimba, so, and that was well played, and obviously thank you for your gift sharing with us today. And uh, also, we uh, had a great golf outing last Sunday. It was a perfect day. The weather was perfect. Uh, so we had 45 people golf, and we raised a good amount of money for our, our youth program, and so we had a great time of fellowship together. Uh, last, last week, we had an annual conference, all the United Methodist uh, uh, representatives from the churches in North and South Dakota. We met in Bismarck, and one of our goals was to raise $100,000 for our ministry in the Williston, Minot, Dickinson, uh, Bakken area. Uh, lots of need in that area with lots of people moving in, and uh, we turned out to raise almost 260000 It's up to now, and uh, what a miraculous offering that was. And... Um, our share of that was we raised $6,200 from our congregation, so we want to thank all those who, who committed to that and supported that. And uh, it's always a great opportunity to give and to be strengthened and to fellowship together with other Christians and other United Methodists uh, to make uh, ministry happen. So, so let us be in a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your presence in our hearts and lives. We thank you for the power of and the gift of the Apostle Paul. As we heed his word, as we remember his letter to the church at Galatia, may we imagine that Paul is writing us today, speaking to us. Open our spirits to you, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oprah Winfrey once wrote, I believe there's a calling for all of us. I know that every human being has value and purpose. The real work of our lives is to become aware and awakened to answer the call. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Lutheran pastor, wrote the book Cost of Discipleship and was martyred for the faith. Once wrote, when Christ calls us as human beings, he bids us come and die. Frederick Beekner, a Presbyterian pastor, said, The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. And Stephen King, the author of many thriller books, once said, If God gives you something you can do, why in God's name won't you do it? The Apostle Paul today as we have continued our sermon series on free to be, alive in Christ. Last week we talked about how we are to be pleasing to God. In the first particular verses of this first chapter of Galatians, 
Paul was writing to the church because there were people, Jewish Christians, who were leading those away from God. And he was reminding them that what he had preached to them was that there's nothing you can do to earn God's love. God's love comes to us by grace. Our response is to be pleasing to God. Well, he continues in that conversation today by talking about his own personal conversion and call to be a disciple, to be in ministry. In fact, he begins this passage by talking about how he had a revelation of God. And we all know his story, or if you don't, his story was he was riding a horse to go uh, into Damascus to uh, get Christians and have them arrested. And he was literally knocked off his horse. And he met Jesus Christ face to face. And Jesus asked him why he was persecuting him. And then told him that he had a mission for him. Paul did not only experience a conversion, a complete change in his life to follow Christ, but he also had a sense of call. He had a sense of call to some sort of ministry. When he reflects on that revelation, he talks about in this scripture today that he went away for three years to kind of ponder all of this that had happened to him because, as he tells us, he was a devout Jew. In fact, he was number one in his class, far advanced from anyone else. In knowing the traditions, he was a Pharisee. He was a Jew who deeply and zealously followed the traditions. In fact, so much so that he had Christians put to death. And yet, in and through that encounter with Jesus Christ, his life was radically changed. The other gift that we don't always know about Paul is that his father and his family, Paul himself, was a Roman citizen. And so not only did he know the Jewish experience, but he also understood the Roman culture and the Roman experience because of his father. As he writes, he talks about how God had called him for this purpose, for this moment had prepared him through his life to be a missionary for Christ. It was more than just a conversion. It was a call to ministry. Helen had struggled with depression all her life, and there came a point where she knew she needed help. And so she went to her doctor, and her doctor suggested she be hospitalized, and they would work on some medications to help her depression. In the midst of that hospitalization, she came to have a rich experience, a moment when she had her Damascus Road experience. She experienced the, the depth of Christ's love in her heart. And after she uh, came out and her medications helped her move out of her depression and she was able to participate in the community again, she felt an urge, a yearning, I need to do more. God has come into my heart and my life, but that's just not it, alone. And so as she prayed about that, all of a sudden she was uh, putting her hands in her pocket when all of a sudden she touched her keys. Well, it came to her. In the town that she lived in, it was a pretty good-sized small town. They didn't have any public transportation or no taxis. And she thought, well, I could begin a taxi service. And I could pick up, you know, drugs from the drugstore and deliver them to the elderly, or I could take elderly people to the grocery store. And pretty soon, this business turned into not only a business, but a ministry, where she touched many people's lives. Paul talks to us about a conversion experience. We've all been transformed. There has been a time in our lives when we have said yes to Jesus. And when we have said yes to Jesus, that's not it. We don't just stop there. Paul tells us that that conversion experience also leads to a call to ministry, a call to be Jesus' servants in the world, a call to be God's representative in our corner of the world, wherever we might find ourselves, within our family, wherever we work, whatever we might be doing. We are all called to be ministers. So often I think we as disciples and followers of Christ think, well, we'll let the pastors do it or we'll let 
staff do it or we'll let other people do it. But my friends, it doesn't happen that way. God calls each of us through our conversion experience, calls us to a ministry, a task of ministry for God. God has gifted us, much like he has gifted Paul to be that great missionary to the Gentiles through his revelation of Jesus Christ. In our revelations of Christ, we are also called by Christ to be disciples and followers of Christ in our world. Now, Bishop O challenged us at annual conference to be bold spiritual leaders. We were kind of joking about that. They kind of hammered that and hammered that and hammered that so that we would be bold spiritual leaders because the transformation of our broken and, and heartless world needs God's people to stand up and proclaim the good news. Not only of a conversion or being born again, but also that we're all called to a task of ministry, of service to God in this world. At the age of 15, Lois promised God at a worship service. She came forward at the altar call and said, I'm going to be a missionary for you, God. Well, it really never kind of worked out. And at the age of 23, she got married to her sweetheart, who was a farmer in that community. Turned out later that he had had struggles with alcohol, and so their marriage was up and down, but they were active in their church and continued to attend. And then there came a point where he really experienced the revelation of Christ in his life, and late in his life he began to witness to his drinking buddies about the power and the love of Jesus. Lois's husband died. And at the age of 76, she said, well, I still had a yearning that God had something for me to do. And so as she sensed this call to be a missionary at the age of 15, it came back stronger than ever. And so she sold everything she had, took her money, went to the Philippines, bought a building, and opened an orphanage for 35 children at the age of 76 and stayed there to the rest of her life. So often we can say, well, God's not calling me, I'm too old. That's been in the Bible. Oh, God's not calling me, I'm too young, says in the Bible. Moses said, I can't speak, Lord, I can't be your servant. When we have that rich revelation of Jesus Christ in our hearts and life, it extends to a call to ministry, a task that God calls us. And oftentimes we are full of excuses of why we can't. And yet God continues to seek us out, to whisper to each of our hearts, to give us that sense of a place where we are called to use the gifts and abilities that God has blessed us with to be his witnesses in the world. Each of us are called. We are all ministers of the gospel. We go forth to proclaim that gospel. King Henry III of Bravia in the third century, or 11th century got tired of being a king. Can you imagine that? A king, being tired of being a king. And so he went across the street to the monastery, to Prior Richard, who was the head of the monastery. And he said, you know what? I'm tired of being king. I want to just come and be a monk so that I can pray and read the scriptures every day and just be cloistered in this community. Well, the prior thought about it for a moment. And he said, well, now you know what happens when you come to be a part of your community. Then you'll have to obey everything I tell you because as the prior, you come to a call of obedience. And the king said, yes, I want to do that. And he said, well, now, you know, it's going to be difficult because you used to be the one given all the orders. He said, no, I want to do that. So then the prior said to the king, well, this is what I order you to do. I order you to go back to be the king of our country because that is God's call for your life. That is the task that God has given you. So you need to go back and do that. It says in that material and the reflection of that story 
that the king became even more obedient to the gift of Christ in his life. We are all called by God. We all have a task of ministry that we are called to. Because like Paul, we have had that revelation of Jesus Christ in our life when we have said yes to Christ. And no matter how old or how young, whatever abilities we have, God calls you and me to ministry, to witness to a hurting and broken world. Just as the Apostle Paul had the revelation of Christ and a call to ministry to be a missionary to the Gentiles, God calls each of us to be a witness for God in this place and in this world. I think Beekner's quote is one that we should hold to this week. The place God calls you to is the place where your deepest gladness and the world's deepest hunger meet. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of your presence in our lives. We thank you that you have revealed yourself to us. Help us not to be comfortable, but move into our hearts and minds, calling us, calling us to a task of ministry where we witness to the power of your love in and through each of our lives. We thank you for the gift of the Apostle Paul. Bless us and bless us in our ministries as we answer your call for each of us. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.